worship today. There's joy in this place today. There is joy found in God's presence. that he inhabits the praises of his people. And where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. Amen. So he is here in our midst today. He's so good. Well, we just want to welcome you this morning. And uh, thank you for being here. If you're here with us for the very first time, we are so privileged that you are here with us. And we would love to meet you and, and get to know you a little bit. Um, Church, we are so just glad to be together today. People of God, amen. And in 
his house. And I love, um, someone prayed this morning about this just being a sacred place. And we encounter him in this place. And, and it's like when Moses encountered God at the burning bush, he said, take off your shoes because this is a holy place. And, and I pray that if this is a different kind of experience for you, that you would just encounter the real tangible presence of God. He is a God that is still alive and moving today. And we are just excited to serve him with all that we have. And I just wanted to share with you this morning, just something that was on my heart, thinking about, you know, worship today. And, and uh, as we lift up our praise, you know, praise is a word that you don't hear a whole lot outside of church, but you know, you praise someone for something that they do that's good, you know, like your kid does a good job on something, so you praise them, you say, great job, you did awesome. Um, but you know, it's kind of different when we think about God and thinking about this dichotomy of sacrifice and praise together, where that comes from. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And that might seem opposite, but when we come to God, this, this uh, devotional I was reading said that our praise to God is not a reward for the good things that God has given us. So we can't come to God thinking that we can only give him praise for the good things that are happening in our lives, right? Um, God is worthy because of who he is. He's the creator of all, all of this earth, of all of the heavens and, and each and every one of us. And so he's worthy because of who he, he is and not what we're going through. So um, today, if you have to if it hurts a little bit to praise, if it hurts a little bit to say, God, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but I'm gonna choose to trust you and I'm gonna worship you in this place, um, that's a sacrifice of praise. So let's just enter into his presence. Say, God, I know that you are good, even if everything of my life isn't perfect or seemingly good right now. He's so worthy and he is a good God. I want to remind you that he is a good God who is faithful and he's true and he's closer than a brother and he wants to pour out his love on you today. So we're going to sing about that. We're going to sing about the goodness of God and his faithfulness to us. Thank you, Lord.
singing out praises today. It just reminds me, I have actually had the privilege to play in a traveling orchestra ministry team in Europe. And um, I sang in, in France. We sang something simple like Amazing Grace, and they were singing it in their language. And we were singing it in English, obviously. And it was just this beautiful moment of like, this is what heaven is going to be like. We're all going to be singing together and praising together, regardless of language, regardless of nation. You know, race, everything of that is just going to fall away. Isn't that exciting? Something to look forward to. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Yeah, sing it out. Oh, my life, you have been so, so of the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You're so good. You're worthy of our praise, and we just give it up to you today. God, may we build our lives upon you, the solid rock. Everything else in life can be shaken, but you are never shaken. So we fix our eyes on you, God. We fix our eyes. We turn our eyes to where our help comes from.
Just the voices, oh Lord, you're beautiful.
you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that speaks to us when we are open. God, let our hearts be open to receive that word. Let's just sing this worthy. You're worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. transformation there is restoration in your presence God and there is nothing that is impossible for you nothing that you cannot redeem or restore so God I pray for those that you are drawing back to yourself today oh father that we would not run away from your love but that we would run to it God we would fully embrace you and embrace all that you have for us God Thank you for pouring out your love, your presence among us today, God. We just lift your name. You're worthy, God. We give you thanks, and God, we pray that as we continue with the rest of this service, Father, that your word would go forth and speak to our hearts. Thank you that your word is alive, and that it cuts through and exposes our innermost parts, our motives and our thoughts, God. Use that to shape us and mold us more into your likeness today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you are seated, would you just say good morning to someone next to you? Greet somebody. Learn somebody's name. <laughs> Tell them you're glad to be in the house of the Lord together today. Well, isn't it good to be in God's presence and, and worship and praise is the gateway to his presence. Amen. That's why we start out with worship. It helps us prepare ourselves and it also fixes our eyes on the direction that we should be looking. So uh, good morning. My name is Natalie. I am um, on staff here at the church, a uh, worship leader, and um, Pastor Kim is on vacation today, so um, so we are, I'm filling in for her for announcements, but i um, so glad that you are here. Hey, can, uh, can we just give like these ladies a hand um, that <laughs> help lead worship every week? And um, can we, yeah, a special shout out to Emily who drove down from Sioux Falls today. And, and our tech crew, we had someone who uh, called in last minute this morning, so um, Hannah is filling in and doing an awesome job. So, so just, yeah, yeah, there you go. Awesome. I'm so thankful, so thankful. We have so many amazing people who just pour out because they love the Lord and they love this church. So um, we are so thankful. Uh, just want to let you know a couple things coming up. Hey, uh, if you went to KidCon and you're in the room, give a woo-woo. Woo-hoo! Yes. All right. Hey, we had some amazing leaders take a group of how many did you have? 20? 19. There you go. I know Nate would know the number. And um, Nicole stepped in and she led that team like a boss, I'm sure. So um, in a good way, a great way. And uh, we're so thankful. She had a great team. See? That's what we do. We lift up one another. And so we're so thankful for the adults that could go to invest in the lives of these kids, that they had an awesome experience. And hopefully one of them will get to share 
maybe um, on the platform later about that experience, but if you see one of them, I know um, Leah and Nicole and Nate and Dean and Shelly, wherever they're at, um, just, just say, hey, how'd that go for you? So um, they're going to tell you about the amazing things that they saw God do, and Jeff, Pastor Jeff and Lily, he drove the bus, and so we're thankful for you, so... Um, but there's nothing like pouring into the lives of young people, right? The next generation is who we need to be raising up, right, to instill the word of God and a love for God. And so um, just thank you so much for that investment. And for those of you who gave to make it possible for other kids to go, thank you so much. Um, just want to let you know about a couple things coming up. Uh, next Sunday, you don't want to miss it because um, after service, immediately following, we're going to have, we're going to go a little old school and we're going to have a potluck. Who's excited for that? All right. <laughs> so we're going to provide some fried chicken, mm, good for the veins and arteries. And, um, <laughs> and we would love you to bring a side to share. So if you would do that, we're going to have a great time of, of in, having fellowship together. And then after that, we're going to have our annual business meeting. And so at that, um, our board of deacons and trustees will share about uh, this last year, where we're at, some details. And then um, Pastor Kim and I will get to share some victories and wins over the year and just celebrate what God is doing at First Assembly. So thank you for coming next week and being a part of that. You can grab the um, annual partner reports are on that table back there. And a big shout out to Karen for getting that done this week so that I could be at home. So thank you, Karen. You're awesome. Um, and if I have forgotten anything, Amanda, I hope that you will fill in the rest. <laughs> Amanda is going to come and share an update, and then we are going to receive new members and partners. So we're excited to do that this morning. Give it up for Amanda. Okay, so I'm, I got a short reign here. Um, Monty, would you go get um, Claudette out of the nursery? Oh, she's in here. Okay, okay, all right. Um, this morning we're going to recognize new members and partners. So um, I think we'll do offering first and then we'll do that. Um, but um, this week, I had a birthday, and um, um, this was, this kind of made me, this was my devotion, and it kind of made me think, and I felt like I was supposed to share this, but I got to get my glasses, because you know I had a birthday. Um, <laughs> James 1.21. So get rid of all uncleanness in the rampant outgrowth of wickedness, and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your souls. Um, and this just challenged me in the sense of once you are born again, your spirit has been reborn, and you will go to heaven when you die. But God is not finished. He is just beginning. You need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, your soul needs to be saved. The soul is often defined as the mind, the will, and the emotions. Each of these areas needs salvation. The Holy Spirit works relentlessly to transform the whole man into God's perfect will. This process is called sanctification. When your soul is renewed with his word, you think his thoughts and not your own. Submit yourself to the Holy Spirit and allow him to change every thought and motive. And I thought about, um, I was just kind of challenged because I gave my heart to Christ when I was six years old. So it's only been, you know, a couple years I've been saved. But, uh, um, but in the course of our life, God is working to sanctify us every single day. And we are continually needing to go to him and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us. And I don't know why I was supposed to share that this morning, but it's what I felt like God wanted me to share with you this morning. So if that challenges your heart, praise the Lord. Um, anyway, uh, if we can have the people who are gonna take offering this morning come.
Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the awesome worship this morning. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to worship you by giving. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless it. And I pray that you would bless each person in this room and help us to continually be allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us so that we can become more like you. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Um, I asked our candidate if it was okay for me to say his name to you all. So if you all would like to get online and look at some of his sermons before he comes here. That is an option for you. His name is Spencer Karoff, and he is at an open Bible church in Des Moines right now. Um, he has four children. Um, his wife, I believe her, her father was an Assembly of God minister. So um, if you want to check him out before he comes on March 12th, he's already checking us out, so I think we should be able to check him out, too. Um, so um, if you need me to tell you more of that name, text me, call me, whatever. Um, the other thing is, on March the 5th, ladies, you're going to get together in that little side room at Perkins, and they promised me they would have people just to service us. Um, and we're um, gonna have, at 11 o'clock, we're gonna just have a little time of fellowship with ladies. So if anybody is interested in that, and I'm working on childcare for those of you who have young children. And um, so um, I just wanna, have you put that in your calendar and get ready because that's going to be a fun, fun moment. So um, I think those were all the things I was supposed to cover as far as announcements. So I'm going to have all the people who are new members to come up here um, and partners. Megan Jensen, and I may butcher your name, sorry if I do it. Nicole Minila, Mela, Melha. Oh, it's pronounced like it looks, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's like when I moved here, every name was pronounced, every, every name was pronounced different than where I grew up and my husband kept correcting me, so. Okay, Jen Morphy, um, Deanna Salem. Oh, it's Swenson, Sorry, I guess I should put my glasses down, right? Um, Claudette Sutera and Annalise Dannon. Yeah. So we want to, first of all, welcome all these people into our, um, they've been here for a while, of course, but we want to welcome them all into um, partnership with us. And um, I'd like to just say a prayer of them, and if you'll all join with me, that would be awesome. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just pray over these ladies, Lord God. We thank you for their heart, that they want to be a part of this place, and we thank you, Jesus, for uh, the ways that they've already started becoming involved in our body, and we pray, God, that you would bless each of them. In the days of head, we pray, God, that you would challenge them um, in new ways in their relationship with you. And we pray, God, that you would use them for your kingdom and for your glory. And we just commit these members and partners to you, and we commit everyone in this room to you, Lord God. And we pray, God, that you will work in our hearts and our lives in these days of transition so that we can be prepared to do what it is that you've called us to do. And we ask this in your name, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. I 
guess I turn it over to Mark for the mighty word, right? Thank you, Amanda. Brian, do we have it on? <laughs> well, thank you all. It's great to be here today. Um, Amanda had no idea why she uh, why she had to share that, but uh, I do, and the Lord does, and that's exactly how the Holy Spirit works. Um, I need to ask a question before I get started. You know, the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. The fact that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal, eternal life. And the fact that he was buried in that tomb for three days and he rose again. So that we as sinners could spend eternal life with our heavenly father if we put our faith and trust in him. That good news of the gospel to be born again. So I need to ask, is there anyone in here, I mean, is anybody ashamed of the gospel? Well, nobody's ashamed of the gospel, right? Well, that's what this message is about, is about being unashamed. So if we're not ashamed of the gospel, then why did I not want to come up here today and share so I'm going to open in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you for what you've already done. You've made a way when there was no way. Father, each and every one of us have that free will to choose whom we are going to serve each and every day. So Father, I pray that through the anointing power of the Holy Spirit, you open the hearts and the ears and the lives of each person in this room and those out there listening that you can come into their hearts and into their lives and use them for one purpose, and that's your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So unashamed, um, when Kim first asked me if I would be willing to share a message, I immediately was just like Peter, and I said, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But then I thought about it. And uh, reality hit me, and I said, whoa, that's, uh, I'm going to have to stand in front of everybody, and, and uh, now they have it out there, and the whole world can see it. So I, uh, that reality hit, and uh, so I, as I prepared the last few weeks for this message, um, thought I had everything down, and uh, this morning at 5 o'clock, he changed it all. And uh, so uh, you would know. <laughs> We're going to start with uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. And uh, in that section of Scripture is where the disciples were sitting around with Jesus at the Last Supper. And Jesus was explaining to him that he was going to be, uh, he was going to be leaving. And uh, in verse 27, and I, I think that's one of the scriptures that they, they put up, if you could pull that up, is uh, in verse 27, it says, you will all fall away, Jesus told them. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And then Peter spoke up. He says, even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. 
So the question I need to ask is, if we're not ashamed of the gospel, then why aren't we sharing it? Why are we ashamed to share it? The last couple of weeks, um, I had an opportunity to uh, reunite with an old friend. Forty years ago when I was young and didn't know which direction my life was going, had a dear friend that was going to move to another state. He was going to move to Colorado, start a new life. I was going to go with him. I didn't go. I stayed. I took a job, and uh, 20 years into that job, I uh, walked into this building right here, and I gave my heart to the Lord, and a year later, some people invited me to go to a Holy Spirit conference in Minneapolis, and um, that experience changed my life, and, and long story short, one weekend, I'm out at the farm, had a group of people over, we were having a prayer meeting, and uh, he stopped in. He was back in Colorado, and he stopped in. Well, at that point, I was like Peter. I was not ashamed of the gospel, so I gave him the whole load, and that was the last time I seen him until two weeks ago, and I thought that he thought I'd lost my mind. But in reality, when he came into my workplace and surprised me, long story short, he thought he offended me. So the two of us, for over 20 years, had not talked once. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings people together, and that's where having an offense or thinking you've offended someone, you need to call them. You need to come together. And the Holy Spirit will do that. He will bring you together. So we reconnected, and we, we had that conversation. I said, I thought I offended you. You know, I said, I dumped the whole load on you. And he talked about the whole born-again thing, he called it. He's very successful. He's retired. He's got a couple of airplanes. He flies. And, and yet, he came back. He still needed to come back. So there's seeds that we sow into people's lives that we have no idea what God's going to do with that seed. So that's what this is about, is not being ashamed to share that good news. As Peter, he stepped out. He was going to die for the Lord, but uh, he denied the Lord, just like we do so many times. We're afraid we're going to offend someone. So we don't say a word. We say nothing at all. And in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, the apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome and uh, where he said he was not ashamed of the gospel. In verse 16, Paul writes, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is revealed by faith. From the first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. So how do we live by that faith? Faith comes by hearing, the Bible says, and hearing the word of God. So if you're not spending time in this book right here, this love letter that God has given to each and every one of us, I never had one of these until about 22 years ago. Never had one. Someone gave it to me. And when I realized what it was, that verse where you hunger and thirst for righteousness. He put me in a position where, uh, with this church family, gave me opportunity to grow. Even though I didn't go to any particular schooling to learn what he's put in my heart, 
It was through the surrendering and the dying of self, not by choice. There's people in here that know it wasn't by choice. It was a battle. I was like a bucket calf not wanting to be weaned, Jack. I was hitting the fence on every side. But they kept me grounded right here, right here. And my life changed in a prayer meeting right here. So if you think that God can't use you, then just give him some time, just a little bit of time. We stood right here. Randy was here that night. Jenny was here that night. And the Lord showed me something that I, it scared me, scared me to death. He showed me healing a person a thousand miles away. And that person was truly healed. And that brought me to my first mission trip to Haiti. And uh, there is where you see the power of the Holy Spirit move. You see people who are unashamed of the gospel. And that's what I desire for us. That's what Jesus desires for each and every one of us. So how do we do that? I mean, Paul said it to Timothy. He encouraged him to not be ashamed of the gospel. Peter said, don't be afraid of suffering for doing good in 1 Peter 3, 13 through 5. So how do we do that? How do we do that? It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit where in Mark 14 where we read that uh, Actually, I'm going to skip up to John chapter 3, where Jesus is teaching with Nicodemus. And Jesus is telling him, you must be born again. And in verse 5, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. And that was so strange to hear my friend talk about that born again experience. I didn't know he even heard a word I said, but he did. And that's where I want to emphasize on here in verse 8. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's like the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. So, Brian, if you'd put that one up about the effects of the wind. And when the Bible talks about out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water, how does that happen? How is that happening? Well, the wind of the Holy Spirit is so gentle, you can't see it. And yet, it has an effect that is amazing. Brian and Hannah, if you guys would come up here. I've always been visual. I like to see it. People will tell me things, and I said, ah, you're going to have to show me. So with that, one of the trips down to Haiti, we would play with volleyballs with the kids down there. And one night, the Lord showed me this right here is a picture of an unregenerated heart without God. It's just dead to the things of God. How can we know unless we are born of the Spirit, born again? So what he showed me is, I'm going to take this one and set it right there as a picture of an unregenerated heart. And if we are willing, and by that I mean dying to self, to allow the Lord to work in our lives. And if you'd come right over here. When we read the Word of God, just turn right there. You hear it in your ear, you take it in your mind, but God's got to take it to your heart. How does that happen? It's a miracle. The Bible calls it a miracle being born again. 
And there is a world out there. And sorry, Brian, but you're a picture of the world. Stay over here just a little bit so those over there can see what's happening. So Hannah, you start pumping that. As you read the word, and as the Lord takes that word from your mind to your heart, something starts transforming in your heart. And that wind of the Holy Spirit, even though the pressures of this world, the job, the family, the hurts, they come in every day. They're going to be around you till the day he takes you home. But as long as you stay plugged into his word and you continue to read his word, what's happening here? A little pressure? A little pressure. Out of your innermost being, keep pumping, Hannah. You just keep on a pumping. And that's the Lord working in each and every one of our hearts as we live out our lives in the midst of the storms of our lives. The world can't stop it. It's tried for thousands of years to stop it. For 2,000 years since Jesus ascended into heaven. And today he's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, the Bible says, interceding for all of our prayers. So in doing that, why are we ashamed of the gospel? The only thing he's called us to do as believers, as born-again believers, is to share his gospel, his good news. And yet we're afraid. And we're afraid because we don't have the boldness that Peter had when he stepped out on that balcony. He went from being ashamed and denying. A little more, Hannah. A little more. There you go. All right. Thank you. So we've got, this is a picture, and you could take it to the parable of the sower, where the Bible talks about seed that produces fruit. There's a seed that's going to produce some fruit. And then there's the individual. Go ahead, slip that. They come to church maybe every Sunday. They sit and they hear the word week after week. That seed is sown. The seed is sown. Some of it's watered. And yet, there's no fruit. Because the cares of this world choke out that seed, right, Brian? Keep pumping. And at first, just like I was, when my friend came over, I gave him the whole load, Monty. I just, I just dumped it all on him. It's like when you sell all the calves and you've got two left, you don't give them the whole load. You just give them part of the load. Otherwise, it's overkill. And uh, so as time goes on, if you don't stay in the word, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that faith, again, comes by hearing the word. So if you allow the world to take your time and your busyness, and at the end of the day, you're exhausted. So rather than spending a moment in the word, you sit down and you let the TV feed you. And that's what you take in. That's good. You weren't very successful at stopping this here, were you? Okay. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand for helping out. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are leaky vessels. And what you've received is not just for you. It's for those that he'll bring around you. He wants to use each and every one of you, each and every one of us. And that's why when I was uh, ashamed to come up here, I was ashamed to, I just said, who am I? But yet, if you don't stay plugged in, that leaky vessel is going to come to the point where you're empty again. And that's the same. It's the same for those that he is using whether you're part of the prayer team, no matter what you're doing in ministry, if you don't find a way to recharge, and the way we do that is by coming together, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in and through our lives. Because as Paul said to the church at Galatia, in uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I believe it is, 
where he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And that is going to be That's what happens when you write way too many notes. But the part I wanted to get to is in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, where Paul, the heading is called by God. And he says, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man. (laughs) Nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel I share with you. (sighs) Because the Holy Spirit will transform your life if you will just deny yourself, and allow him to work in and through you. I mentioned earlier about that conference in Minneapolis that I went to, um, and there's so many that have heard and been prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and whether they've received or not, or, you know, and they feel like they're unworthy, that was me. I, uh, I'd been prayed over by very anointed individuals, different evangelists had come through, and uh, I didn't receive, never received. And they was having a, a Holy Spirit conference in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and friends from church invited me to go. And I said, well, the only way I can go is if it's going to rain. Because I had hay to put up, and well, it rained, and it rained, and it rained. And uh, third day into that conference, I'll make a long story short, some things happened that just crushed me. And uh, I was just empty, just like a sponge. And some friends said, they've got prayer for baptism of the Holy Spirit upstairs. You going? And I said, yeah, I, I guess I will. So I just walked up. In a room similar to this, only it was it was only about 10, 15 people standing in a circle and an elderly lady standing in the middle of that circle. And she had a piece of paper. And she was standing there reading off of that sheet of paper what the baptism of the Holy Spirit was all about. There was nobody touching me. There was nobody laying hands on me. I was just standing there. But I was empty. I felt empty. My flesh felt like it was going to die. But there was something welling up in here that I couldn't control and I couldn't stop. And within 30 seconds, I'm praying in a language I never heard before, and it's coming out of me like rivers of living water. And two guys come up beside me and grab me by the arm, and the one guy goes, breathe. It was just a continuous exhale. So the power of God is real, the Holy Spirit is real, and uh, from that day to this, I've been challenged by different things, and I want to challenge you in those very same things, that if you'll trust God, and if you're not ashamed of the gospel, and the Holy Spirit being that third person of the Trinity that no one wants to talk about, because after that day, my life changed dramatically. And if it wasn't for people and, and different people in this church, and one of them sitting right there that kept me grounded, because I was bouncing off the walls. I didn't know what was happening in my body. I didn't know what was happening in my life. But God is real, and he is faithful, and he will bring people around you that will continue to lead and guide you. And uh, where I was going with that, is uh, the battles that we're fighting today are spiritual battles. And we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fight these battles. So in order to do that, you know, and if you're going to share the gospel, 
And the enemy's going to sit on your shoulder and say, you don't know what you're doing. And you're right. We don't. But he does. And he, that Holy Spirit is a comforter. Jesus, when he was sat at the Last Supper, and he talked to his disciples. He said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send one to be with you, a comfort, a counselor, the Holy Spirit. He'll lead and guide you. He's going to bring to your remembrance all those words that you've stored in your heart that you didn't even know you heard. He will bring them to your remembrance to use them when you need them so that when you come to that individual and, and you want to share with them about the grace of God, what Paul said to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And even that faith is not something that you've conjured up. That's a gift from God, not by works. Why? I was born in a main denominational church, went to church every week, got drugged to church every week. But I didn't know the loving God. I knew the God that was going to clamp down on me every time I did something wrong. Grace, unmerited favor. Why is it by grace that I'm saved? It's not by works so that no man can boast. Because that's what it brings. It brings both. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So today, the word says that if you confess with your mouth, Paul told the book of Corinthians, that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I believe it says that it's with your heart that you believe, with your mouth that you confess that Jesus is Lord. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So today, I need to ask that question. I did it. I did it right here in this church. I walked an aisle, said a prayer. But I got to confess there was no fruit. I did it because people asked me to do it. They wanted me to do it. And I knew they wanted me to do it. So I did it. It's when you're ready. You're going to know as you know when you're born again. And that, that happened to me after I got back from Minnesota. It doesn't make any sense. I should have been born earlier. He already blessed me with the gift of speaking in tongues, but I feel like I was born again the next morning when I was at home. Didn't want to, didn't want to live anymore. He already blessed me with a, a prayer language. And, and the, the neat part about that story that I wasn't going to share, but uh, now I have. <laughs> That's the way he works. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because I left that room up there and they hadn't even laid hands or started praying on anybody else and I walked down a hallway and it was a long hallway and I was looking for a restroom because I've been just weeping and crying and I didn't know water could squirt out of your eyes but it came and uh, I found that restroom I'm in there washing my face the door opens and this little little bald headed man he was more bald than I was he, he walked in and he stood about this high and and he just walked up and up, and uh, he says, the towels are right there, because I'm standing there dripping wet with water on my hands. He grabbed the towels and washed my face off. He says, you mind if I pray for you? I says, no. And, and that man laid hands on me and prophesied over me. He told me things about my life <laughs> and how God was going to, what God was going to do in my life. And, uh, of course, I was crying some more, and I thought I had to wash my hands again, wash my face. And that man turned and walked out the door. All of a sudden, it hit me. That man didn't even use the facility. He had just walked into this room. So the door is still closing, and I walk out into that hallway, and there's nobody there. So God will bring people. I believe there's angels that he'll bring into your life to lead and to guide you and inspire you and challenge you. But it's only 
when we get to the end of ourselves, as long as you think you've got it under control, they'll just wait. He's patient. They'll wait. And there's many in this room that, uh, and that, that's what church family is about, is, you know, Allison, we went to Haiti together. There's many in here that uh, we've done so many things together that, that he wants to continue to do in and through the lives of his people. We've got some challenges to hit church and uh, some big decisions to make. And I don't want to do it without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to do it without the unity of the body. And so today, two questions. If you've never given your heart to the Lord and you want to do that, I just shared how we can do that. It's a simple prayer, but the choice is yours. Don't do it grudgingly. Don't do it because you think people want you to. Do it because right now, the Bible says that no one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws them. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through what, through me, through what I did on that cross. And today, he wants to do that in your life. We do not have the assurance of tomorrow. Today will be the last day you take a breath. And that breath is a gift from him. The Holy Spirit like the wind. So every breath we take, what are we doing with those breaths? So if you'd like to do that today, there'll be people here to pray with you. I'd be humbled and honored to pray with you to receive the Lord. And if you've walked away from the Lord, if you feel like, God, you, you're not going to forgive me. You know, I didn't realize that, you know, I thought I had to get cleaned up before I could come to God. <laughs> he proved me wrong there. I was and to this day, you're never going to be cleaned up completely. That's why Amanda had to share what she shared. Work out that salvation with fear and trembling. Not fear of the Lord. Fear of failing Him for what He has already done for each and every one of us. That love that He pours into our heart with the power of the Holy Spirit is for us to give away to those that he's going to bring. We live in a dying, hurting world that needs to know the truth. And when we know that truth, the Bible says it sets us free, free to serve him, unashamed to share what he's doing in and through our lives. And the other thing I'd like to invite that prayer team to come, who's ever on that prayer team and wants to lead people in the Lord and wants to pray over them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So at this time, that prayer team would to close in a word of prayer and uh, but I don't believe the Lord is done he's not done with anyone that is here or anyone who's out there listening he wants to use each and every one of you to bring glory to him it's not glory to self but it's glory to him and there's going to be doubt that's going to come and when that doubt comes remember the story of of Thomas when he stood outside of the room that the disciples were in when Jesus raised from the dead how the power of the Holy Spirit the same spirit that lives in you and Peter says I'm not going to believe unless I can take my hand and see him he's alive and take my finger and see him because I won't believe that he's alive well, a week later. So in that week, they decided to forgive Thomas for his unbelief. They didn't reject him. When we've got people that turn away from us, don't reject them. Forgive them. A week later, Peter was, or Thomas was with them. And Jesus came into the room again. And this time he emphasized on Thomas. He said, Thomas, I'm going to stick your hand. my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Folks, that's us. It's by faith. So today, by faith, I pray that if, if you want more of the Holy Spirit, if you want more of what God has for you, these altars are open welcome to come. And if you've never given your heart to the Lord, if you feel like you've fallen away and you want to just rededicate your life to the Lord, these altars are open.
Father, today, I want to thank you for the opportunity to not be ashamed of you, to not be ashamed of your word, of what you want to do in and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, the comforter that was sent because the Son did the will of the Father. And right now, he's sitting at the right hand of your throne, interceding for every prayer that is being lifted up to you. Father, without faith, it's impossible to please you. And by faith, we believe that you are alive, Jesus. And we believe that you sent the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us. So today, Father, we praise you for what you're going to do in and through the lives of each and every one of these believers that have put their faith and their trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen.